Shabbat Shalom. This Shabbat, we read and study Parashat Toldot. The Torah portions from Genesis are rich in information and details. There is much to learn from these portions, especially from this week. Today, I want to focus on Jacob's work ethics, as well as a common question that arises from Jewish tradition. Was Jacob considered a yeshiva student? This question causes us to ask ourselves the following. How much quality time are we spending with God? And what is our top priority? God or the world? Indeed, this is a thought-provoking portion that makes us reflect on our own relationship with the Almighty. Let us go back to the question of whether or not Jacob was a yeshiva student. Jacob and his brother Esau grew up. Esau became a skillful hunter, a man of the open country, while Jacob was content staying at home among the tents. Many interpretations have been written in an attempt to understand the phrase to stay at home among the tents. A popular view on the matter claims that this phrase means sitting and learning Torah. The Jewish sages' depiction is, but Jacob was a perfect man dwelling in tents. Dwelling in tent is not written in the passage, but rather dwelling in tents. Jacob would go out from the academy, Beit Midrash of Shem, and enter the academy of Eber. He would go from the academy of Eber into the academy of Abraham, Midrash Tanhuma. Many consider sitting in tents to mean that our father Jacob was a yeshiva student, hence the justification for the extensive learning and prayer, sometimes at the expense of manual labor, household income, and the participation of the burden of the military service. This problem does not exist only in Judaism. In Christianity, we are familiar with the concept of monks, nuns, and monasteries who follow this ideology. This issue is not foreign to us either. As believers, we consider an ideal to invest in, in faith, learning, prayer. The goal is for God to be the priority in our lives. Surprisingly, the Bible and the New Testament focus primarily on how we treat our neighbors. Yes, our duty is to worship and believe in one God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But the kind of work that pleases God comes mainly in the form of how we treat others. In other words, we believe in God and we want to serve Him. But how do we go about doing so? We can accomplish this by serving our neighbors out of our faith and love for God. In Matthew 22, Yeshua was asked, What is the greatest commandment? Yeshua could have simply said, Love the Lord your God and finish with that. However, Yeshua could not stop there. There is more. Love your neighbor as yourself. This commandment is not just about our personal relationship with God. Even more, it's about our relationship with our neighbors. Yeshua taught us that even the commandments, we're talking about the, the word of God is annulled when there is a person in distress. An example of this is found in Matthew 12, when Yeshua healed someone on the Shabbat. It exemplifies how our focus cannot just be in one direction, upwards, but rather in both upwards and towards our environment. Our life's challenge is to find the right balance between the vertical and the horizontal. Let's go back to Jacob's story. Are there other ways to understand the phrase to stay at home among the tents? Yes. In fact, a similar verse is found in an earlier chapter. Ada gave birth to Yuval. He was the father of those who lived in tents and raised livestock. A dweller in tents is also known as a shepherd. Assuming that Jacob learned from his forefathers, what exactly did he study? What was Jacob's main occupation during the first years of his life? Was he mainly studying the Torah and seeking God, or was he mainly engaged in manual labor? The answer is revealed to us in the course of events, and we must look at Jacob's actions as they appear in the following passages. How did he behave? As someone is, that is used to manual labor, or as a scholar? 
as soon as he arrived in Haran, Jacob encountered local shepherds with flocks of sheep lying near a well. Jacob immediately spoke to them and said, Look, the sun is still high. It is now time for the flocks to be gathered. Water the sheep and take them back to pasture. What are you doing here? Why are you wasting time? Go shepherd the flock. Jacob is revealed as a, as a person with high work ethics who preaches morality even to strangers. Jacob is not satisfied with words. He is also a man of action, as seen in the following verses. When Jacob saw Rachel, a daughter of his uncle Lavan, and Lavan's sheep, he went over and rolled the stone away from the mouth of the well and watered his uncle's sheep. Jacob is described as having above average physical strength, as well as being skilled in watering flocks. What did Jacob do? For the first month, he was at Lavan's home. Did Jacob sit and study Torah? Did Jacob seek answers to all of his questions? What does God want from me? Why am I in Haran? Why did I get into this trouble? What is his life's purpose? The next verse answers this clearly. Levan said to him, just because you are a relative of mine, should you work for me for nothing? Tell me what your wages should be. The answer is that Jacob did not rest for a minute. He shepherded Levan's flock. Levan sees Jacob's work and offers him a job. Why did he decide to do that? He witnessed Jacob's work ethics, and he wanted him for himself before his competitors would would offer Jacob a job and take away his hard worker. Jacob shepherded Lavan's flock with diligence and persistence. He was faithful to his work even under difficult conditions. We read about this in the challenging dialogue that Jacob had with Lavan. I had been with you for 20 years now. Your sheep and goats have not miscarried. Nor I have eaten rams for your, your flocks. I did not bring your animals torn by wild beasts. I bore the losses myself. And you demanded payment from me from whatever was stolen by day or night. This was my situation. The heat consumed me in the daytime and the cold at night and slept fled from my eyes. Jacob pointed out to Lavan, just as the Torah points out to us, that God protected and preserved Jacob throughout all these years due to his incredible work ethics. But God has seen my hardship and the toil of my hands, and last night he rebuked you. The Jewish sages learned an important lesson that I think we should learn and apply in our own lives. From this episode, we learn that the merit acquired from labor may be helpful even when the influence of one's ancestors is not. Midrash Tanchuma. The essence of this quote is that a person, a person should not say, I can eat, drink, and be merry, and not bother myself with work, and I will still receive mercy from heaven. It is the opposite. A person must work with both his hands, and afterwards, God will send him his blessings. Shabbat Shalom.